Coach obviously saw it in person, but after watching the tape, what, what are your thoughts on, on Devin Neal's performance? It was an outstanding day by him, by our offensive line, our, our offense, uh, the perimeter blocking, um, special day for a special guy. Um, as I just told the team, you know, some of the things that come his way are definitely still part of a team achievement. Uh, for our defense to be on the field about what 42 plays or something, we were got off the field, gave us opportunities. It was, it was a, a fitting, a fitting end to a home career. Yeah, there's a team that's on its own winning streak yeah. right now. Do you see any similarities outside of that, or just with that, with your home? Um, you know, they're playing extremely well. They've, they, you know, you know they made a change at quarterback earlier in the year, and it's really paid off for them offensively. They found the rhythm. They're well balanced. They're physical, big up front. Um, you know, they got a lot of weapons like everyone. They got as about as good as receiving tight end I think as we've gone against athletically. Um, They've created explosive plays. Um, Dave Rand, after taking over the defense, has done a great job. After you know, he's an outstanding defensive coordinator. Um, they've been they've been uh, explosive in special teams re in, in the return game. So it's it's going to be a another big challenge for us on the road against a really good football team. And like we said, has played extremely well here the last five plus weeks. And you know, their their game against Colorado was really a Hail Mary or so away from being a win before it went in overtime and then a fumble as they were going in the score. Otherwise, you don't know how that one turned. So this is a, this is a good football team. And uh, in a couple times, we didn't play them last year. and But the two other times we've played, we struggled. So we got to got to find a way to find our niche in this one and, and make it a game. You mentioned after the win on Saturday, the possibility of still playing in a bowl game uh, this season, like how much of that is a topic of conversation this week, well, or is that not? On again, the we table? don't, you know, talk about it much. I think everyone knows that, you know, you if you if you win, you're going to get a chance. It's almost like a playoff game where if you 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 play, you win, you get a chance to play again. If you don't, your season's going to be over. So, our guys have our guys have known what what the bowl eligibility record needs to be the number of wins and uh, so it doesn't need to be overly talked about and we talk about trying to play better and um, you know we've gone through a, really a, you know th three emotional weeks um, four games in a row against ranked teams um, we have to prevent any letdown in that because as we said we're playing a pretty hot football team and a very good football team so um, being able to handle the handle some success, handle the emotions and, and the physicality that's gone into these games will be a big challenge for us and one that uh, I, I felt today there was you know good attitude and a way to go about it and and uh, as, as we kind of get through the, the first installation of things today. Trevor had the, the highlight play, almost hurdling the, the Colorado player. Uh, we've seen him pop up a couple times here and during the winning streak. What does this season look like to you, and what does he bring? Yeah, he's progressed. Offense? He's really kind of progressed confidently, and uh, I think Jeff is, and and Tyler Bolfing, who also works with Jeff at the tight ends, have done a nice job in his development. I think he's become a better blocker, which doesn't get noticed. Uh, he's worked on the physicality of his game throughout time, um, but he has shown himself to be the the pass receiver that we and threat that we thought he could be and he's made some big catches and it's good you know he and Jared both I thought had had uh, real solid days for us in in the receiving core probably as much as we've had from that position versus the outside guys and you mentioned the offensive line when talking about Devin how impressed have you been with that unit's level of play this year and even for some you know not rotating as much but for someone like Calvin to step in you know just how yeah I thought, you know again Calvin got pressed in the action I thought he played well again he had the one penalty but you know even when he was that he was aggressive and uh, hope that guy's okay and uh, it, but uh, that you know it kind of went went through that where you know, you, you you try to keep guys ready and rotate. I thought Bryce Cable do again played a, a really fine football game and the ability to flip over the other side and play and play well. Bryce Foster uh, had hit one of his better games. I think again the guys all up front, Kobe and Michael Ford. Michael Ford's a guy that we rarely talk about, but has been so steady for this program for four years and consistent. Um, you know, it's a big day for them and uh, very gratifying because. 
we kind of challenged them and for, you know, for us to have a chance to win this football game, it was going to be done up front. I think we talked about that after the game, and I, I think those guys answered it. We can see Daniel Hyshaw yeah. at the game. Yeah. What's his status right now? Right now, he's, not, um, he's, he's away from the team right now with a personal family matter that he's dealing with. So. Lance, you talked about the emotional weeks. Um, I wonder if you could give some input on, on what that has required for you guys over these last four weeks to, to, to take that mental edge and keep that sharp and, and what your guys have had to go through mentally, not as much as physically, to, to just get on a run like this. Well, again, it, it, it still goes to daily process of what we try to do and challenge them. They understand that we don't have a lot of leeway for, for any more, any more uh, negative outcomes if we're going to have a continued way to play. But the biggest thing that we challenged, again, was still the same things that we talk about, even, even when things are going well, is to be a better version of ourselves than we were the day before. And to kind of challenge ourselves, the one thing I didn't want us to be is I'll challenge us to be the more physical football team, to be the more excited team to play. And uh, don't let anyone ever question your will and your want to play this game, And which also goes into don't let anybody question your effort level, even when you're back to the wall. Because just like in life, there's certain days you got to go through it, even when things aren't going right. You don't get a chance to wake up and decide if you're going to be a parent today or if you're going to be a spouse or if you're going to go to your, your responsibility of your work and the responsibility of what you signed up for. And when things don't go well, you've got to still find a way and, and, and whether it be as a unit, as a, as a team, or even back to the individual, you, ha you have to find that internal motivation and, and honestly professionalism and maturity to go about your responsibilities. And I think our guys have done that. You've given so much credit to your players and, and this program. I wonder how much personal pride there is for you. Um, oh. be, because you said a lot, and you were questioned a lot about staying with the process and, and sticking yeah, with it. And yeah. how, how do you feel personally about where you guys know, are at I, right now? I don't know. It's probably more I'll answer at the end of the year, if you don't mind, because we're not done yet. But, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, it's, you know, when things aren't going right to say that, you know, this is a position, a, a job in, in coaching and athletics where we're, we've, we put ourselves into a, I don't know if it's not really a, a microscope or a spotlight, whatever you want to say, that everything we do essentially gets second guessed all the time, and that's 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 what it is, and that's what society has continued to to uh, I don't know highlight, I guess, in in this profession. I, you know, I, you know, you, you can go on our social media and, and and during any football game and probably type in any coordinator's name that's going on that's not winning or moving the ball at the second and find out what everybody thinks about his employment status or something. And, um, you know, as you go through that, though, there's certain things that you have to continue to stay strong and believe in and go about it. And But at the same time, it, I think what gets lost sometimes, guys, is People may because they're emotional, they're fanatics, right? That's that's what fan is, right? And and you and you get emotional and into it, not understanding that we are many times our own worst critics in the room, okay, of what we're doing, how we're doing it, what can we do better. But there's certain things that happen and that you have to stay true to in what you're doing as you as you continue that analysis and evaluation within your program. And um, it's not always taking people out or making changes or doing those things. There are certain things, and, and we've said it through, the, through those times that we can all pick those plays. Somebody will probably write a story here about the top whatever plays and what our record could have been and something like that and all of that. If, if we would have done this instead of that or if the ball would have bounced this way instead of that way. But it, we, we are what our record is, and we have a chance to, to, to find a way to win a sixth game and play. And, I don't know about gratitude or whatever. I, you know, was feeling good about anything right now. I, I just know that, uh, you know, what I have to do is to the people that I'm responsible for and to our fan base and all those that care. Are we doing the best we can at this particular moment? And, and uh, that's the thing when you look in the mirror. Are you doing the best you can? Trying to do your best and I've. I've, I've said it before to our players, so I'll say it to you, is that I've, 
it isn't like we get together on Sunday, then we can go, how can we jack this thing up and find a way to get fired and we can move our families and relocate our kids into new schools and do that. Okay, that's never the intention. Okay, and, and, and when you look at it, know that you're doing the best you can under the circumstances and you find a way to do it. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we can't get better and we need to, you know, be, uh, you know, short-minded to, to new ideas. We just have to continue to evolve and be the best we can. I think Logan tried to play through some stuff. Logan Brown tried yeah. to play through some stuff. Just how's he doing at this point? Yeah, he didn't practice today. I don't know. I'd probably put him in the doubtful area right now. So, Jalen said that going through senior day was just about the fact he was graduating and wanting to be a part of that moment with his yeah. class. Is, is yeah. that how you saw it? Did you read? Yeah, that's kind of the conversation. Obviously, Jalen will continue to have a lot of decisions to make, and we we know that is um, in in today's world of what and he's continued to play well here down the stretch. So, but again, a lot of those guys that had eligibility remaining because this group was close, they wanted to do that. We had guys last year do the same that returned, and um, so. There, there are parts of that that, and, and um, I think we're getting close to getting through all the COVID years and all of that, but I'm sure there'll still be medical hardships and other things that there'll still be a day where there'll be sixth year and whatever guys, but there is a way that if somebody, uh, they felt, and that was something that, that uh, Jalen had expressed to us a while ago that he was going to do this. and. and 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 rightfully so. Lance, but I like Blake Harrell and Taylor Davis and Calvin Clemens. Some of these young guys are getting mm -hmm. some action, even special teams. How important is that for these guys to get that game action, losing so many seniors? Yeah, it's it's expense. It's the experience to get them in the game and and get their feet wet, so to speak, in those environments. Jalen Todd, you know, DJ Warner with the snaps. He's he's been able to get um, all of that, and and um, is is critical so that it's. You're not essentially, uh, you know, going to be. We'll, we'll be a younger team in some ways, but um, again, it's it's great for them to get it. They understand. You get it, you learn learn on the job. I think all those guys have made nice progress, and we look forward for their continued development. And you guys, <coughs> you guys have worked with the collective and doing that type of thing through NIL. Now it's about to change to rev share. What are you guys like meeting on and talking about, getting ready for that change? Well, again, you look at, um, you know, what what that's going to look like. Where, where, you know, we when we get the direction from the administration, what it's going to look like, what those numbers are, and how we build out a roster from that point. And as we continue through the, as we finish up the year, then we'll start having those conversations and and uh, of what that'll look like for each player. And there'll be a lot of meetings and things like that as we go through. To build off that real quick, I know there's going to be the, the roster limit changes. Mm -hmm. How does that present challenges for you as head coach when you know that there's got to be certain things that change with the number of yeah, guys you have on a team? You know, again, the, the roster reduction will, will obviously is something that we're not excited about as far as opportunities within the program. Um, you know, um, walk on players that have been here paying their own way have been great contributors and is, is really kind of a a nice part of, of college football will still have some, but not as many. And um, we have to look at as we've continued, uh, Rob Ionello and our really our player personnel department and rec slash recruiting department has worked on this through the fall on different things. And we kind of look at uh, what our numbers are be, um, how that's going to affect our practice model, and one that we've talked about a lot in here, and how much we have. Um, like our practice model and what it's done for player development, but that'll be affected. So there'll be some changes as we go through this. And then 11 a.m. kick on the road as a head coach, is that the preferred kick? Would you rather have night? You know, how, how does that kind of change well, things or okay. what do you prefer? Well, it's our second 11 of the year, which is not very many this year. And uh, I think we'd like it. I think, you know, this year we're, we're, we're staying in Waco where two years ago I, we stayed in Temple, which is almost an hour away. So when you get an earlier kick like we did in West Virginia, and you've got a you've got a longer bus ride that may that does affect your morning. So I think from what Michael Painter, our director of football operations, has said, we should be in pretty good travel space and that. So being a morning practice team and getting up and getting going, I, I think is something that'll be good. We've 
had more night games probably than we've had in the past. And and we, we had a stretch of these mid-afternoon kickoffs at home. So it'll be exciting. I, I, I think probably one that where it's at and everything to sit around in a hotel on the road is is always a little more difficult than what you'd like. So um, I think we'll look forward to that 11 a.m. kick. How could it be a positive or a negative to play against a staff for which Jeff Grimes was so recently the offensive coordinator? Um, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, Jeff is a extreme professional and and uh, has has nothing but positive about his time there. Obviously, it becomes a distraction when people ask about it and if it when, what the impact is and and though he expects that um, you know I, I know he'll prepare for this like he does every game but I'm sure there's there's probably something there and the, that uh, probably will resonate to him and you know he has a son on the other team so that that also plays a part um, that um, Jordan you popped up you'd act like you didn't know that or Okay, you kind of like I thought you hurt your neck there for a minute. You, but, um, but, um, you know. So I, I think there's something. You know, AJ Stewart and Tyler Bolfing on our offensive staff as well. We're we're part of that staff last year. So obviously, I'm, I'm sure there's stuff with some personnel that they have some familiarity with. But again, there's enough changes that evolve at this time of the year. I think the teams have kind of created their identity in their own way um, as this year's progressed.